Hello and welcome to CBN News. My name is Dan Andros and I'm joined by Will Dawson from CBN Sports. Will, March Madness has been going on. We had a little pause from it after the weekend, but the Sweet 16 kicks off tonight. So I wanted to take a look at this because you've been covering it for CBN. And I got to say, I'm always surprised at how many solid Christians and believers there are in the sports community, especially in college, because I don't know, for me, I don't know why, but I just don't expect that, but you see a lot of it. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think my first Final Four covering it was back in 2006, and I know that we had to search high and low to try to find two or three guys that would profess faith, and a lot of times it was the guy at the end of the bench. But really in the last several years, not just in college basketball, but professional sports, you think of the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud, uh, they're not the bench warmers anymore. The stars are actually professing faith. I think it's a really cool thing. Yeah, it is. And and for those who don't know, Will is going to be uh, at the NCAA. And he's going to give us a live update from there on the Final Four, right? So we'll be looking forward to that. And I, I got to say, I did do a bracket last minute, Will, and it just... It, it, I was hanging on. Like, if you look at the ESPN bracket, like you can, there's millions and millions of people that do these brackets. And if you did one, let us know in the comments. I, I'd love to hear from you how you're doing. Uh, I am hanging in at the 88th percentile, but, <laughs> and I think there was only three cor correct after the first round out of tens of millions of brackets, which is just, it's ridiculous that anybody could get it right. It's just so impossible. But you got a better uh, chance but, at buying a lottery ticket and winning. Yeah. Not that I know that, of course, but. <laughs> Yeah. You have a better chance of doing that than, than actually getting all these games right. And the fact that we're just one weekend into this tournament and we have three three people that have picked them correctly, it really says, again, like we had talked before, the reason this tournament is called March Madness. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into some of these faith stories, uh, Will. Uh, there were some people um, on all of these teams. Which ones stand out to you? I know in Tennessee, we've got Coach Rick Barnes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was in Knoxville with Coach Barnes, and we sat down and talked about his time. Uh, Coach Barnes was in Texas until 2015, and he led Texas to a Final Four, for, I think, for the first time in nearly 40 years. He had Kevin Durant. Um, and then in 2015, he got fired after failing to met, reach the second round. And so he went to Tennessee and has done a great job at Tennessee though he's never gotten them past the Sweet 16. Coach Barnes is a man of deep faith. Uh, he tries to instill that in his players as well. He runs a great program. Their team really is a defensive mentality, has a defensive mentality, and that's tough to win in March unless you have a scorer. But this year they do. They got a guy named Dalton Connect who can go for 30, even 40 points. We've seen him do it a couple of times this year. And uh, he's a 6'6 guy, over 200 pounds, can – shoot it from beyond the perimeter, about 42% beyond the three-point line. So you got to like Tennessee's chances. And really, uh, it's tough not to root for a guy like Rick Barnes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, like, and real quick, we're talking about these brackets here. I know they're doing these second chance brackets. So you said Tennessee's got a good shot. I mean, are you still on the on the UConn train as far as who you think is emerging? That's kind of where most people are picking as UConn emerge out of this thing. Uh, who do you, before we go further on some more of these faith stories, who do you like kind of peeking out of this thing? Well, there hasn't been a repeat champion in the NCAA since 2006, 2007, the Florida Gators, I think in Atlanta that year, cut down the nets. And so it, it is a very difficult thing to do because it's a one game scenario. It's not like the NBA playoffs where you have a best of best of five or a best of seven one bad game and you're out. And so it's always hard to repeat as a champion, but UConn this year has really proven themselves over and over. They've got senior leadership. They got guys that can move around and hit the, hit the shots from inside and outside. Donovan Klingon, uh, their big man is tough and they've got a really tough minded coach and Dan Hurley. And so it's hard for me to pick against them though. The odds say that's not likely. So if it's not UConn, so let me hedge my bet a little bit. If it's not UConn, then I'd go with a team like Houston. And again, another tough defensive-minded team uh, with a bunch of senior leadership. And they were just just barely outside the Final Four last year. Yeah. Yeah. And another team that kind of had a run that was a little bit disappointing last year is Creighton. And one of their leading scorers is uh, someone of strong faith as well. 
Yeah, Baylor Shireman, and what a heartbreaking loss for them last year in the Elite Eight against San Diego State, who goes on to win uh, or to go to the national championship game against UConn. But Baylor Shireman is another guy who doesn't shy away from sharing his faith. And he's a lot like, almost like a mirror image of Dalton Connect. Uh, Shireman, I think, is 6'7", about 220 pounds, a lot like Dalton Connect. He can score. He can rebound. He's a great passer. You can see when you watch him on the court that he's really thinking about the game, high basketball IQ. Uh, just just a great, tremendous guy. And follow him on social media. He He's not afraid to share his faith. Um, but really, here's what I think is going to happen tonight between – I'm sorry, tomorrow night between Creighton and Tennessee. They're in the Midwest region. Tennessee's the two. Creighton's the three. If they win and the higher seed prevails in the other in the other game earlier in the day, that's Purdue. I think the winner of this game is going to represent the Midwest in the Final Four. I think it's mm-hmm. that big of a game, and both of these teams are capable with guys like Shireman and like Dalton Connect. And uh, also NC State, DJ Burns this is another player. He's a big guy, big center. Also talking uh, about his faith as well. Tell me about him. DJ Burns, March Madness is made for guys like this. I mean, it's all <laughs> it's all about the personalities. This guy is six foot nine, two hundred and seventy five pounds. He looks like an NFL left tackle. Uh, he, he. What's funny? I think another story that came out this week was that he owns a couple of vending machines for a side hustle. Uh, but a guy that in his Bible or in his uh, his bio has has uh, Proverbs 1429, whoever's patient has great understanding, uh, one who is not quick tempered, tempered and dis- or one who is quick tempered displays folly. But uh, yeah, another guy that's unafraid, not ashamed to showcase his faith while he's on the basketball court. But what a fun what a fun guy to watch on the court. So I'm cheering for NC State personally. They're an 11 seed. Uh, it was back in 1983, I think, that Jim Valvano led NC State to the championship. And NC State was on the bubble before they came into the game. They had won five games in five days in the ACC tournament just to make the NCAA tournament. And here they are in the Sweet 16. Yeah, yeah. And he, I mean, a big, big guy. I mean, I, for anyone who's played basketball, I've played basketball you know, six nine two seventy five is you are not moving that individual. Like you are just uh, <laughs> I mean, setting a screen. It's like you're running into an absolute brick wall. It's just he's a load in the post. Yeah. So uh, we got a question in the comments here for you, Will. Who's playing? Who isn't playing in this tournament that you wish was right now? Oh yeah. Well, the University of Kentucky is my alma mater. So as much <laughs> as I love NCAA basketball in this March Madness tournament, I do think it's the best four days that opening weekend in all of college or in all of sports. Uh, you got games that start at noon and they go to midnight. But I will say Kentucky, two of the last three years, Kentucky has been the biggest upset of the tournament. And unfortunately for Coach Cal, he has most of the talent in the NCAA. Those guys go on to the NBA, become NBA All-Stars, and he's happy to tout the amount of money that they make on their first and second contracts. But no, it's always a disappointment to me when Kentucky is not part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned San Diego State. Now they're they're playing UConn tonight, and this is a rematch of last year. You talked about UConn trying to repeat. This is a rematch of last year's title game. What what can you expect to see in this one? Yeah, I don't think this one is going to be uh, as close as it was last year. <laughs> San Diego State just doesn't have the team that they that they do or they had last year. Uh, it's great for them that they've gotten back to this point, um, but. UConn is UConn, and I I think UConn is favored by double digits tonight. I would expect them to not have much issue with San Diego State. For all those San Diego State fans that are out there, I would say I hope that uh, I hope that I'm wrong. It's always great to see an upset go or a, a big team top seed go down. I will be cheering for that personally, but I think, <laughs> I think UConn is just too strong. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Um, but yeah, like you said, March Madness, you never know. And uh, that's that's always where it's fun, because even if you don't know the teams, like I have not followed it closely enough to know like all the players on all the different teams. I know some of them, but you just get into a game and you watch it and there's inevitably a couple of them that are always super close and, and super exciting. Um, so we're talking here and we're previewing the Sweet 16. If you're just joining us, thanks for being here. 
And we got Will Dawson from CBN Sports, who's going to be uh, there covering it. And where is it this year? Where is the Final Four? It's in Phoenix. So we'll we'll touch down sometime on Thursday. And then Friday is our media day where we will, through CBN News on the YouTube page, we will have some exclusive content, some behind the scenes, some player interviews. Those are always fun days. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And I like and I like having us there as CBN because you're going to ask questions too, pertaining not just the basketball, of course, you'll ask those, but faith as well. And that's that's the part of it that, you know, a lot of the other kind of hardcore sports guys aren't going to really get into. And like we were saying at the top, it is super surprising how open so many people are about their faith in the sports world. You're seeing it more and more. I mean, you see it in the NFL as as well, Will. Like you see, I mean, how many of the quarterbacks, star quarterbacks now are really outspoken Christians. Like you talked to CJ Stroud, you mentioned one of those. There's just so many of them and it's great to see it. And I know the CBN audience loves it when we highlight these people that have this platform and they're being really bold about their faith. I know another one on Clemson, PJ Hall. Tell me about him. Yeah. PJ Hall is a guy who last year battled through some injuries he had his girlfriend's father passed it, passed away unexpectedly and through it all i think you know like anybody else who has adversity in their life when when you kind of come through that you realize that god was with you the whole way that's pj hall's story he's 610 he's clemson's big man and um, he had told a local news station there that he can't thank jesus enough for what he's done for me and uh, just kind of a guy that you can see has been through it and is enjoying the ride and and who doesn't uh this is what a, a college basketball player lives for just to get to the big dance but then to win a couple of games and say we are two wins away from the final four that's pj hall so yeah i encourage you to check him out they played uh, tonight in the first game against arizona and they're an underdog but again that is what march madness is all about is cheering for those underdogs and uh as big as this guy is you know it's not somebody who uh, is going to be pushed around. He's going to make sure <laughs> yeah. that he enforces his will. Yeah. And, uh, and just when I, my personal tactic, by the way, will, when I don't know if I don't know individuals on the team, we're learning about them now, but when I find out that we've got a Christian out there, I'm like, all right, I'm cheering for them. I've got somebody to go for. And that's just, that's just the way I do it. Hubert Davis is another one of these former uh, NBA player, former college player, big time. And now the coach of North Carolina, he's been open about his faith as well. And you've talked to him about that. Yeah, two years ago, he took over for Roy Williams, who is a, a legendary coach, Hall of Fame coach. And uh, his first year, he led North Carolina to the national championship game. And really, that game should have been North Carolina's. They were uh, they were up big in the second half, I think as many as 18 points. Kansas came back and ultimately won that game. But I had asked, I had asked Hubert Davis about his faith and this... Uh, little response that he had uh, went went viral, had several million views. And and he's a guy who really is. Uh, he's a solid believer. The foundation of who he is is not a basketball player. His identity is in Christ. And he's another guy. When you think about people who you can root for, just like Rick Barnes and his faith, it's tough to root against a guy like Hubert Davis. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, CBN Sports, Will Dawson. Will Glad you're going to be heading out to Phoenix for us. Uh, anyone who's interested right now in the NCAA tournament, you got your bracket, you're hanging on, you're trying to see where you land. Maybe you did a second chance bracket. Maybe you're just a big fan and you want to see Christian succeed on a big stage. We'll just point it out a whole bunch of them there for you that you can be rooting for. And we will see you uh, at Final Four time, Will. Appreciate the preview here. Yeah, I look forward to being there next week and touching base with you again, Dan. All right, thanks a lot, Will. Thank you.